Mercenaries, right where we need to go. That sentry droid probably spotted us already. Great. They were probably looking for me when they saw your shuttle go down. We could try handing the Zabrak over. You know, bargaining chip? Who do you think shot you down in the first place? Good point. Forget I said anything. Hidden caches. We should be on the lookout for more of these. They could come in handy. Yeah?
Another sentry droid. The mercenaries must be using them to locate us. There's probably another patrol nearby. Miratona chun raso masakan gatorota. Dona nochi, kilipamuli ras lemo podwanga kun bis king, dor nerinarisa kunikiti, teranasa farfasinta, noi doroka moto kra. Miratona chun raso masakan gatorota. Wait, bounty? Why is there a bounty on your head? Da kosha ni chotono, punta chakorzo waman, gotas juna rananasha ni, visitisa cholo, kumasone, machido pachawa chanamaba. I don't think so. You'll have to come through me if you want to take the general. Ragichi sa, donasinto norokipa shakani. <laughs> I always feel a sense of calm when I walk the surface of Telos. The Athorians are truly amazing in their work. The force is strong here. Whether Chodo and his herd has anything to do with that is another matter. Can you feel anything? That is good. As a breeze may swiftly turn to a gale, you are slowly beginning to be reopened to the force. Quiet. There's a large mercenary patrol up ahead. If you move carefully along the perimeter, we may be able to get by without their spotting us. We could cross along the shore, or head along the cliffs to the south. Bold. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes.
The mercenaries have at least two hidden caches like this. We should keep our eyes open. There's the landing pad. There should be a computer terminal I can access from there. Looks like we're gonna have to fight our way there, though. Look sharp. What do we have here? The Jedi. Saves us the trouble of looking for you. Corin Fault did say you were dangerous. Maybe he does know what he's talking about. Fault hired me to keep everyone out of the Restoration Zone. You in particular. A grenade with your name on it, Jedi. Attack!
Yes.
Hopefully I'll be able to access the shield network from this console. Good. It's functional. And my passcodes still work. Now let's find your ship. The TSF probably thinks the ship was put down in the wastes, but they don't know the planet as well as I do. Telos's atmosphere has been turned into acidic vapor. Landing a ship in the wastes would be like sealing it in a hangar full of hungry Minox. So that means there's probably an unsanctioned landing site somewhere on the planet. Still shielded, but not a restoration zone or other listed facility. That's why I need access to the shield network. Here, a small anomaly in the shield network's power grid. I'm not surprised the TSF didn't spot this. It's subtle, more like an error or random flux than anything suspicious. It looks like power is being drawn to generate a shield over a small area in the polar region, but nothing should be down there. Orbital camera shot. Nothing, just an empty mesa. We should investigate this. I feel this is the best bet of finding the Ebon Hawk. That's a little tougher. According to the computer, the shuttle was currently docked inside the research facility. At least there was at last report, though that was months ago. I don't, but that's not going to stop me. I'm getting back to Citadel if I have to build a new ship myself. There's one other small problem. Recently, Zerka teams that were sent into the military facility have not been coming out. But it's not as though we have any choice. This arm of mine isn't just for show, General. Stand back. The Zerka mercenaries were a little surprised when I broke my way out of my holding cell. The shields there were even weaker than these. After you... Focus. <laughs> 
She is one orbital shuttle. Looks like it's in serviceable condition. That's all a moot point, though. The hangar bay doors are closed. 
I don't fancy flying the shuttle through solid metal, so I'd say we need to find a way to get them open. We'll also need to find the ignition codes for the shuttle, or else we'll have some trouble getting off the ground. If we get all that, I wouldn't worry about what shape this heap is in. I'll get it running. Mwancha mori chiwa, mufala wa ni bobo wish yot kuna sita dorcho ni soba wata? Kawana bota yunta tanga kinamatora, ta yaita, ta bosana nansata, tonata bias de villa, jicho watana, ikune rakete dinito, para mas nucho! Grey King no una panca di planito ba manananga.
Don Lalo. Tong la... Chija... Ta... Kawana bota... Kawana bota... Pero huta...
Kawana Tonino Papin con ella
hiding statement. Oh, Jedi, there are as many of us as are needed to capture or kill our targets. Egotistical boast. And there are far more of us than any one Jedi. Destroy one of us, and more shall rise from the wreckage. Unnecessary threat. And our attack protocols are more than a match for you and your allies. Radio achieved. Everyone down! Lay down your weapons, and you shall not be harmed. Why is it that everywhere we go, I end up in a cell? I mean, why did they lock us up? What is this place? It is a training ground for Jedi. What? This ice hole? Yes. It bears the semblance of an academy. But where are all the students? Curious. You've got to be joking. What is a Jedi academy doing out here in the middle of nowhere? It is a place hidden from the galaxy like the Academy on Dantooine. But this place... Oh, Atris, you have been clever. Atris? It's none of your concern. Well, the sooner we're out of here, the better. Two crazy Jedi are more than enough for me. No one told me we were going to be dumped in a nest of Jedi. And what is it about this place that causes you such fear? What do you mean? We're in the middle of a bunch of Jedi. You know how they are. No, I do not. Not in the way you seem to. What? What are you doing? Get out of my head! Stop struggling. Let me follow the current deep, deeper to its source. Stop! Stop! Ah! Ah. With the fear is mingled guilt. It squirms in you like a worm. And the why? Ah. And there is its heart. You surprise me. I could not feel it before. Your feelings are a powerful shield indeed. Do not worry, Aten. If he is a Jedi, he will forgive. And if he is not, he will not care. You can't tell him, please. I'm asking you. I don't want him to... Think less of you. I hardly think that's possible. Still, there is no shame in what you ask. We all wage war with the past, and it leaves its scars. I will not speak of yours, Aten, but there is a price for such things. What? What price? There are those who wage war and those who follow them. 
You are a crude thing, murderer, but you have your uses. You know how important this man we travel with is. Even one such as you can feel it. You will serve him until I release you. And if I refuse? You will not. If you do, then my silence will be broken. And then, Atten, you will be broken. You fear the Jedi, and rightly so. If Atris learns of your choices, you will never leave this place. But whatever fear you hold of the Jedi, know that if you disobey me, that my punishment will make you beg for the death that has long hounded you. Wipe the fear from your mind. You will not find blind obedience a difficult master. You chose it once. You will learn to embrace it again. I don't know how you became such a manipulative witch, but why a vicious old scowl like yourself would even bother with me is a bigger mystery. No game of Dejaric can be won without pawns, and this may prove to be a very long game. You are a slippery one. Your thoughts difficult for even one such as I to read. I suspect the self-loathing that squirms within you gives you a curious strength. Your spirit, as diseased as it is, refuses to allow you to give up, no matter what threats you face and whatever wreckage you leave behind you. I feel you have crossed our path for a reason. Perhaps even you, at the right moment, may be able to turn aside disaster. If so, your potential is not yet spent. Fine. I'll be your pawn. But I still think you've got the wrong man. Perhaps. But someone has to fly the ship. And the Force is a hard thing to predict. You have crossed our path for a reason. Our path brought us here for a reason. And now I know why. The past is here, and it must be met before the future can be set in motion. Uh, more Jedi speak. Care to explain? No. I've wasted enough time with you. Sleep, murderer, and be silent. I need no distractions. A critical moment approaches. I did not expect to see you again after the day of your sentencing. I thought you had taken the Exile's path, wandering the galaxy. Yet you have returned. Why? Your concern is noted. Your friends have not been harmed. They have been detained for their safety. I find it unusual that you are traveling with others again. I had thought you had forsaken the company of others after the war. Or is that why you are here? Yet here you are. Perhaps you do not know yourself as well as you think. Regardless, your arrival here begs an explanation. Have you come to face the judgment of the Council, as you did so many years ago? Are you finally willing to admit that we were right to cast you out? Why? Because you turned your back on us, and the Order. You followed Revan to war against the Mandalorians, the very war that made Revan a Lord of the Sith, and ruined you. The Republic asked the Jedi Order for aid against the Mandalorians, that much is true. Yet that aid did not mean rushing into battle, giving in to aggression, your hate, your passions. You sought adventure. You hungered for battle. You could not wait to follow Revan to war. The Jedi Order asked only for time to examine the Mandalorian threat. They urged caution, patience, and you defied them. So when you returned, you were brought before us. You were a Jedi no longer, and so you were exiled. There was much about that day that was difficult to forget. Your words... Your defiance, and when you stabbed your lightsaber into the center stone. I have kept it, so I would never forget. Indeed, a lightsaber is the mark of a Jedi. When you turned your back on the Order, it was not yours anymore. I have always kept it, as a reminder of what can happen when your passions dictate your actions. I have kept it, 
so I would never forget your arrogance or your insult to the Order. Become a Jedi again? That is a thing far out of reach. But I am not unsympathetic to your feelings. Leaving the Order must have been difficult for you. Yet you gave the Council no other choice. You gave me no other choice. So your choice was to meet the aggression of the Mandalorians with more aggression. That is not the Jedi way. Every choice we make, whether we know it or not, sends echoes through the Force. It can awaken feelings, ignite passions, hate, anger, fear, where none existed before. By meeting aggression, by serving as an opponent against which the Mandalorians could test themselves, you fed their hate, their lust for war. And it sent a terrible echo through you. And because of it, you and those Jedi who met them on the battlefield lost their way, and you turned on us. Of course I was. But the Jedi teachings require we examine how we may best help them. Action without reflection is not our way. There was no guarantee that marching to war would have saved the Outer Rim. In fact, quite the opposite. A physical victory perhaps, but the real victory lay in... Do not twist my words. A physical victory is not the only victory or the only loss. You do not know... How dare you? The Mandalorian Wars should have been your grave and Malachor V is where you should have died. What? What do you mean? You're wrong, just as you were when you defied the Council. I tire of fighting with you. You lust for war, and you always will, and you have succeeded in distracting me from my questions. So answer me. If you cannot seem to admit the Council was correct, then why are you here? Your ship? Ah, the Ebon Hall. It is not your ship. Unless... You are admitting to the destruction of the Paragus mining facility. Ah, an accident. Something beyond your control. You have not changed. Acting instead of thinking, putting yourself before the galaxy, before the Jedi. Do you know what you have done? No, your crime is much more than that. Without the fuel from Paragus, Citadel Station cannot maintain its orbit. It will crash into the planet and its destruction will echo across 20 other worlds. Telos was a test to see if the Republic could mount a restoration effort on the Outer Rim. When it fails, the Republic will not finance another. The other Rim worlds, devastated by the Sith, will remain graveyard worlds, devoid of life. And that is the magnitude of your crime. So you still hold to your flawed convictions. If you think to anger me, you are wrong. How is it that you are not content to confine your ruin to yourself? You must spread it to others wherever you go. Ruin yourself with your actions if you will. But when your actions bring harm to others, then you must answer for it. The Sith? What do you mean? You speak truly. You have encountered the Sith. I can feel the scars on you. Tell me. Where did you encounter them? Paragus? What would they want there? They can't have been looking for you. There are no more Jedi, except I. Like you, they turned from the Order, and now only I remain. If these Sith attacked you, they will soon realize their mistake. And if you escaped, they most likely let you go to see if you would lead them here.
You offer your aid after turning your back on me, on the Council. The Jedi is not something you embrace out of fear. The commitment is stronger than that, something you never seem to understand. Perhaps. But if you help me, it cannot be done from here. There are others in the galaxy who may help us against a Sith threat. If you can find them, gain their trust. Perhaps our defenses shall be stronger for it. Take your ship, seek them out. If you find them, encourage them to gather on Dantooine. From there we can call a council and see what can be done. You shall find them north of here, in one of the old irrigation chambers. They have not been harmed. They are free to leave as well. Then I shall send you on your way. It is now time for you to depart. We shall remove him, mistress. Come with us. Are you all right, mistress? The exile brought up feelings best left forgotten. Forgive me, mistress, but I must ask. The exile, I've never seen another affect you so strongly. Did you care for him once? The Jedi have no such attachments. As always, he will do as he wills. And the galaxy, and the feelings of others, can burn for all he cares. The day we judged him, I stood in the chamber and he was... He was so right. He was so certain of it, I doubted myself. He chose Revan over the Jedi, over the Council, over... But now, now I am tired. I must meditate. Of course, Mistress. I will tell the others you are not to be disturbed. And please, do not exhaust yourself. We can attend to matters here. Why have you approached me? You will find them in the main irrigation channel room, in the northern part of the plateau interior. The particle emitters there that once governed the flow of water to Telos can double as force cages. They were caged for their safety, until we could determine your intent, exile. Atris cautioned us against your tactics, fearing that your allies would create a distraction. Your companions gave us little trouble, however. The male could have presented some challenge if he had resisted, but he chose not to. He has had some Ichani training. He masks it well, but when you are in danger, his mask dropped into a stance we know well. I do not know. The Ichani forms are known to be taught to military special forces throughout the galaxy. If the source is a mystery to you, perhaps you should ask him. It would be wise to know those you travel with. Your ship is stored in the hangar. Atris has given you permission to leave this place, and permission to return if you remain in her service. You may ask... This was once a mighty irrigation center for Telos. It survived the orbital bombardment of the Sith, though the inhabitants did not. Ancient irrigation channels still lie beneath the surface of Telos, waiting to be used again for the reconstruction efforts controlled from this facility. Shortly before the destruction of Dantooine by the forces of the traitor Jedi Malik, it was had many Jedi artifacts and knowledge transported here secretly. The Jedi Council sensed it, Master Vruk, Master Vandar, but it was too late to do much except make arrangements for evacuation. It was a dark day for the Order. Many on Dantooine did not survive, Jedi or not. Atris would not speak for many days after the attack, 
and we feared our mistress was lost to us. In time, she regained her voice and her strength. She brought the artifacts and the teachings of the Jedi here and has kept them safe. Even the Sith prefer life prey to scavenging a corpse. She thought that a world already savaged by the Sith would not prove a target a second time. It was a place where the artifacts and the teachings of the Jedi could be kept safely if the Sith could not be turned aside. Yes, many relics from Dantooine, some which predate even the destruction of Ossus. She was not able to save all, but she saved enough. She was able to bring them here before the Academy's destruction. It was a fortunate thing. She was not able to save everything. Ossus was once the home of much of the Jedi teaching and knowledge. It was destroyed over 40 years ago by the Sith during the time of Exar Kun. Fortunately, a few relics and artifacts were saved before Ossus was destroyed, but many were not. Viewing the relics is not allowed without Atrus's permission. There is truth in what you say, yet many such artifacts are sealed away in Atrus's chambers. But if you wish to see a few of them, speak to the last of the handmaidens. She has seen some of these objects and has an interest in such things. Yes, she should be in the training chamber to the north and west of here. She constantly seeks to improve herself so that she may no longer be ranked last among us. Because she is easily distracted by matters that do not concern her or her duty. Such distractions weaken her, and she knows this. I will not speak of them. Ask her yourself, if it matters to you. The Exile, the one Atrus warned us about. I am the last of the Handmaidens. This is correct. I train so that one day, that will no longer be true. It dishonors me that they would say such a thing to an outsider. But I cannot deny the truth in what they say. My thoughts are not always focused on training. Perhaps once having known the ways of the Jedi, you may understand what occupies my thoughts. There is much knowledge here, and only one of the Jedi remain. There is so much about their ways of battle, their forms, their stances, that may be lost forever if the last of the Jedi is taken from the galaxy. I know your meaning, but I have not been clear on mine. Stance, form, discipline are a means of expression and communication. They speak one's heart and one's devotion to their cause. Yes, the methods you use to meet your opponent speak truer than any words can express. When you risk pain or death, there is no truer sacrifice or strength. It was to the Jedi traitor Malak. It was to the Jedi traitor Revan. When Terrace was destroyed, it showed Malak's heart through its execution and intent. It was brutal, without finesse, but showed his commitment to defeat the Jedi. Yet with Revan, there was the same commitment, but it was a subtle thing, like weaving threads in a tapestry, or strokes upon a canvas. He spoke through battle and tactics, in a way one could never do in words. He showed his heart at Malachor V, and finally, at the end of the Jedi Civil War. I believe he was speaking to Malak in that final battle, though few knew it. Through battle, Revan was meeting betrayal with betrayal and showing Malak the pain he had inflicted on his master. 
what stronger display than death for conveying one's sense of being betrayed by one's own student? Revan's anger must have been great indeed. I would have wished to have been there for that final exchange and seen the truth of their conflict with each other. But to say that seems an untruth based on what I know of the Jedi. The Force can drive others, but there is still choice, is there not? If there is no choice in the Force, then our teachings and our actions are for nothing, and I refuse to believe that is true. You may ask. She said, you betrayed the Jedi by going to war when it was forbidden to you. You turned on your masters, your teachings, and yourself. That is not all, she says. She says you know nothing of loyalty to any cause except your own animal instincts. And she told us why you fell to the dark side. Atris says that you fell to the dark side in the Mandalorian Wars when you gave in to your lust for battle. Once you tasted war, you could not give it up. Atris says when the Dark Lord Revan returned to the Republic, you did not march with them because you had fallen so far you could no longer feel the Force. I believe that is the extent of her expressed feelings toward you. There are variations at times, but all rise from the same foundation. Yes, it is difficult sometimes for others to truly speak their heart or listen to it. The words often prove difficult, or they do not come at all. Without having seen you and Atris fight, I cannot say. Battle is a pure form of expression. It is heart and discipline, reduced to movement and motion. Then her expressed feelings will have to suffice. You may ask. I am the last of the handmaidens. I know a little of them, yes. Much Jedi knowledge is stored here. Secrets of their teachings, combat styles, and discipline. The Jedi relics are kept by Atris within the walls of her meditation chamber. Entry is forbidden. Atris has made her orders on the matter clear, and she says you are no Jedi. Entry to her meditation chamber is forbidden. To even ask shows you doubt my loyalty to her. Most come from Dantooine, brought here before the academy there was destroyed by Malak. Not all relics were able to be saved, for there was not time to rescue them all. I am not permitted to speak of such things, and it is not your concern. The Jedi relics are kept by... Most come from... Not... You may ask. I honor the face of my mother. It is not something spoken of in the company of others. I do not wish to discuss it. If there is something else you wish to ask, you may do so. There is no need to apologize. You were merely remarking on something that you saw. There is no wrong in that. It is not a sensitive subject, but a subject that requires trust. There is no such trust between you and I, and such trust takes time. Before you go, Exile, question for you, if I may ask it. You have touched the Force. What does it feel like? Please, I wish to know. I see. Thank you, Exile. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge with me.
Why have you approached me? You will find them in the main irrigation channel. The particle... It is not part of my duties. Free them yourself. Then you must leave this place. They were caged for their safety. Until we could determine your intent, exile. Atris cautioned us against your tactics, fearing that your allies would create a distraction. Your companions gave us little trouble, however. The male could have presented some challenge if he had resisted, but he chose not to. We have some training in dealing with Jedi. You would have posed little threat. Did you find what you came for? There was something from your past here, something unresolved. I feel we did not come to this place by chance. You were led here. This woman who resides here, she did something to you once, something that hangs upon you still. There is a Jedi here, perhaps, in that you are correct. Yet there are no students, and this woman, this... Atris surrounds herself with those who cannot feel the force. Curious. Plans are fragile things, and life often dashes expectations to the ground. Perhaps students will come to her in time. For now, she is surrounded by those who cannot feel the force. No, her servants are not Jedi. Their minds are walls, trained to resist tricks of the mind. This discipline blinds them to the Force as well, even if they were Force-sensitive. Invade the mind of another? It is not something done carelessly, or when there is nothing to be gained. Very well. Let us depart. Ah... <sighs> He's only sleeping. It seems the journey here has fatigued him. I am sorry, General. I must have lost consciousness in the crash. 
I'm fine, General. Even power has been restored to my arm. What is this place? Where are we? This must be where I had detected the energy readings before, and the drain to the restoration shields. This room, this place, it looks part of a huge polar irrigation system, possibly planet-wide, like the one on Coruscant. I had been told by the Republic that it was not in use. I am, General. If you wish, I may travel with you, or join you at the ship. Very well, General. Why have you approached? Your ship is stored in... thing what lies behind it did she perhaps it is a meditation chamber of some sort the construction of this door is like nothing I've seen on Telos and it is not the same as the rest of the facility here You have returned. Why? You may ask. The mistress? What of her? She is meditating, and she does not wish to be disturbed. 
your presence here has troubled her, and I hope you do not choose to trouble her further. She leads us. As she rebuilds Telos, she rebuilds the Order, and through them, the galaxy. We serve the Jedi. We do not question them. Yet, Atris has told us that the work here at Telos may pay for similar efforts in many worlds along the Rim that were destroyed when the Jedi turned on each other. She has said the Jedi Order needs such a foundation if it is to rebuild. She faults the teaching of many of the Jedi Masters as the spark of the Jedi Civil War. Indeed. A most curious reason for a war. Atris has said that if Revan and Malak had been properly instructed in the ways of the Jedi, they never would have fallen, and nor would you, Exile. That is unknown to me. I have never observed Atris to teach Jedi, nor would I wish to. Yes, to teach one needs students. I have seen few of those since our arrival. Atris has chosen instead to focus her efforts on galactic recovery. Once the galaxy breathes again, Disciples will come. She predicted you would say as much. She seems to know you quite well. Perhaps you are the one who knows nothing. I would welcome a chance to instruct you. I have been anxious to teach you many principles of combat ever since you invaded this place. Oh yes, we train extensively in various combat styles, and we have not had another target for some time. You may prove a pleasant diversion. Very well, follow me, and we shall see if you have the endurance to learn the most basic of our teachings. Before we begin, are you familiar with the Chani traditions? All duels between us shall be without armor of any kind. There shall be no restrictions upon our movements or upon yours. Your feet are not to leave the training mat during the battle. If they do, you will lose. Also, this is not a fight to the death. Restrain your instincts when we fight, and we shall do the same. The fight will be with hands and feet only. No stimulants, shields, weapons, or other items. Also, do not call upon any Jedi techniques during our contest. If you do, then the battle will be over. In turn, I will not use our higher forms, for this is only an opening battle between us, a test of each other's strength. Then let us begin. This will teach you. You have fallen. Seek one of us out when you wish to fight, and we shall honor your request. Have you returned to fi- Very well. It shall be the same as- Then let us- succeeded. If you wish, you may challenge us again, and we will progress to more advanced movements.
Mistress, the last of the handmaidens is not among us. She has left with the exile. Left? But why? Her oath. Her reasons are unknown to me. But I fear she may no longer be trusted. We will save her if we can, but we must let her discover the exile's nature for herself. Some evils must be confronted, and isolation from it would have been no defense. Well, now that we're off that Dajaric board of a planet, I say we burn sky until we see lines. machine saying. <laughs> we seem to have found it. Do you know why we have called you here? As Revan summoned you, so have you come full circle to return to the Jedi. Why did you defy us? The Jedi are guardians of the peace, and have been for centuries. This call to war undermines all that we have worked for. Is Revan your master now? Or is it the horror you wrought at Malachor that has caused you to see the truth at last? You refuse to hear us. You have shut us out, and so have shut yourself to the galaxy. You are exiled, and you are a Jedi no longer. There is one last thing. Your lightsaber. Surrender it to us. Much defiance in that one. You were correct, Kavar. When he was here, I felt it. It was as if he was not there, more like an echo. The war has touched the youngest of the Order. Many of them have lost themselves in battle against the Mandalorians. We have not lost a Jedi this day. You felt it. He has lost himself. He is no Jedi. He walked Revan's path, but he was not strong enough. I fear it is our teachings that may have led Revan to choose the path he did. We are not the ones who taught him. 
We take responsibility, Atris, not cast blame. The choice of one was the choice of us all. Revan's teacher intended no harm, and Revan had many teachers since. Yet they all stem from the same source. Her teachings violated the Jedi Code and lead all who listen to the dark side, as they did the exile. You are wrong. The dark side is not what I sensed in the exile. Surely the rest of you felt it as well. That emptiness we felt. He has changed. Whatever that wound was, it was of the dark side. We should not have let him depart. He will simply join Revan again, or perhaps worse. What would you have done with him, Atris? Be mindful of your feelings. This is not Revan who stood before you. This one walks a different path. No, although that may come in time. We let him go because we must. Where he travels, he carries his destination with him. Malachor V should have been his grave. You saw it in his walk, and in the Force. It was as if he was already dead. No, not death. Many battles remain for that one, if what we have seen is true. But the future is a shifting thing, and he cuts like a blade through it. We should have told him the truth. A Jedi deserves to know. No good would have come from it, even if what you believed was true. There is still the matter of Revan, and such truths could leave us vulnerable on two fronts. Perhaps in many years, we will call him before us and explain what happened to him, and how he may be healed. Until then, he must accept his journey. But he may never discover the truth, and he will never know why we cast him out. And that is the future we must accept. Those Jedi sure like their secrets, don't they? strange coincidence. It is no coincidence. There is some larger plan at work here, and we are walking into it. This is too convenient to be anything but a trap. Those are Atris's records you have stolen. What the hell are you doing on our ship? I have come to join you. I can help you against this threat. Well, we don't want your help. Or any of your sisters. It is just me. And I am doing this because Atris believes you will need help. I think the strength of the enemy is unknown. But it is greater than five can hope to defeat without aid. Indeed. But of course, what does one more matter to our journey? I have had enough of this. I will be in my chambers. Yeah, me too. I'll be in my chambers. But since I don't have any, I guess I'll just go to the cockpit like I always do. If she's coming with us, she gets the cargo hold. Might remind her how fun it is to get locked up. General. The cargo hold is enough. I assure you, there is little I need. I will attend to myself. It is no matter. I am used to worse conditions, but thank you for your kindness. General, is there a reason you don't carry a lightsaber anymore? That's not your lightsaber anymore. That belonged to someone who served Revan in the wars, not the person you are now. You could build another one, if you wanted to, but you know that. I don't know, General, but whatever the reason, you should put it behind you. I know this. A lightsaber is part of who you are. Without it, you're not complete. I think I can help you out there. I happen to know the parts you need. I spent a lot of time around Jedi during the war. None of them would let me take their lightsaber apart, but I did learn about their construction. We need a power cell, emitter matrix, 
lens and focusing crystal, though I have to admit the crystal is beyond my means. Never did understand them. Those parts are fairly common, though a Jedi once told me that it's best if your lightsaber reflects you, and if it is constructed of things that identify it as your own. Just bring the parts to me before you get started building it. I'll make sure they're usable. All I'm saying is that you've gone for a long time without a memory wipe. Most droids behave erratically under those circumstances. I know that, but I'm fixing everything else around here, so I may as well take a look at you, too. What was that? That's what I'm talking about. That is not normal droid behavior. I am not pushing you around. I just wanted to see if there was anything I could do to upgrade your functionality. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Good. Now let's get started. You wouldn't guess it from the outside, but it looks like you've been through a lot. I'll bet. I'm all done with you. If anything comes loose, let me know and I'll put it back in place. Welcome, Exile. Is there something you need? Yes, your features, your stance. There is a calm about you that I did not notice on Telos. There is an energy about you, a lightness in your movements. It is something I have seen in only the most disciplined and revered of the Ichani Weapon Masters. Yet it comes to you with ease. It shows in your features. It is beautiful to see. You may ask. She said you betrayed the Jedi by going to war when it was forbidden to you. You turned on your masters, your teachings, and yourself. That is not all she says. She says you know nothing of loyalty to any cause except your own animal instincts. And she told us why you fell to the dark side. Atris says that you fell to the dark side in the Mandalorian Wars when you gave in to your lust for battle. Once you tasted war, you could not give it up. Atris says when the Dark Lord Revan returned to the Republic, you did not march with them because you had fallen so far you could no longer feel the Force. So it was a matter of choice, then. If Atris has erred in her evaluation of your motivations, it might be best to inform her. I believe that is the extent of her expressed feelings toward you. There are variations at times, but all rise from the same foundation. Yes, it is difficult sometimes for others to truly speak their heart or listen to it. The words often prove difficult, or they do not come at all. Without having seen you in Atris fight, I cannot say. Battle is a pure form of expression. It is heart and discipline, reduced to movement and motion. Then her expressed feelings will have to suffice. Perhaps it may prove truer than conversing with words. In battle, the words are swept away, giving way to actions. Mercy, sacrifice, anger, fear. These are pure moments of expression. You may ask.
Before entering Atris's service, yes, I carried a name, as all the children of the Ichani do. It is not important. My title and rank is of consequence, not my name. I take value in Atris's service, not in myself. We all have value in our oaths to others and the promises we make. When we make that pledge, we are pledging ourselves to something greater. When importance is placed on the self, then by such acts the galaxy is unmade. If reasons of the self is why you turned away, then yes, perhaps there was a judgment there, but it was not intended as an attack. I do not know. That is a question you must ask yourself. I meant no offense, but the question remains. If the question angers you, oftentimes there is a reason for such anger. You may ask. I am training, so that if danger should strike, my body and my reflexes will be prepared. That, and I had forgotten how long hyperspace travel can be. If I do not have something to focus my attention on, I fear my sanity will erode as well. Training is something reserved for certain cast members of the Achani, but I do not see the harm in instructing you in some basic principles. I do not understand how you and Atris fight but I will instruct you on how Ichani children are raised on warfare. All Ichani fighting principles rely on foundations. If one does not understand the most basic of fighting moves, it is not possible to understand the higher tiers. It is similar to learning the alphabet of a language before being able to use words, then sentences. As a foundation, I will instruct you in our elementary movements. The body itself is the first weapon you must master. It is not something that can be described. Let us duel, you and I, and that shall teach you more than my words can. Use only your hands and feet to strike at me, nothing else, or our combat shall be over. Do not resort to using any items or any force techniques you may possess. Such things will obstruct learning. Duels among the Ichani are rituals, and it does not allow for armor or anything that restricts movement. Your modesty has no place in combat. Even the youngest of the Ichani understand this. You should as well. Now, are you ready? Very well. I shall match my movements to resist your efforts, and do not hold back, or I will hurt you. You fought well indeed. You have caught the principles of the style by watching and anticipating my movements. Before you go, there is something I must know. Why did you go back? Face trial. I see. It was always something I was curious about, to walk to one's own sentence willingly. It's a brave thing.
Yes? You know, I noticed a glow before, but now, now it's bright around you. You've come a long way since Paragus, and despite all we've been through, you seem a lot better for it. It shows. It's kind of inspiring, to be honest. Anyway, just wanted to mention it. I think the others have noticed it too. I don't know what it is, but you look different. It shows. Alright, what did you want to know? Huh? What are you talking about? Oh, that. Don't tell anyone, but you wouldn't believe how many fights you can prevent by just pretending to know that stuff. I mean, it doesn't compare to wearing a lightsaber, but then again, that doesn't seem to help you much. Yeah? So what? I don't ask any dumb questions about your past, despite the fact that it keeps throwing us into life-threatening situations. Wanna know why? I figure if you ever want to tell me something, you will. So give me the same respect, alright? Well, hey, thanks. But you've got the wrong guy. I'm good at shooting people, cracking wise, and pretending to know how to fight with my hands. Alright? All right, but I'm out of credits, so it's Republic Senate rules. That's where we waste a lot of time trading cards and trying to beat each other. But in the end, nobody wins. Everybody loses, and nobody accomplishes anything. It's like stalemate, except the goal is to pass time until the audience gets bored and leaves. You seem pretty calm. Well, it's good to see. You're a nice counterbalance to that old witch back there. Alright, what did you want to know?
we intend to gather to us. This ship is not the galaxy. There is only so much room. Then prepare for an army, I think, for it seems many more will come in time. They will follow you because you are a leader. Their kind always needs such, even when the figure deserves no such obedience. Do not cloak one word within another. <laughs> Friends. Do friends not follow? Do friends not form a hierarchy of their own, no matter how small the circle? I am too old for friends, and when the years settle upon you, you will dispense with such words as well. Because I am not blind, that is why. I see what they see, hear their voices when they speak to you, and notice the change when they speak to others. I know many things, and I know what I am not. I am no leader. I speak with a voice that will never move others. I speak with a passion that goes unheard. They obey you because you are a leader, and perhaps something more. Have you noticed what has been happening? Have you felt it in them? They echo you, either fighting or surrendering to their feelings, their loyalty, their duty. Your mere presence serves as an example to them of something to uphold or something to fight against. Watch them carefully, see their patterns, and recognize the strength in it. Influence can be a weapon, one that you may need before your journey is done. I care not which of the words you use, as long as you make use of that which you forge. That was Revan's way, I believe. It was a strength. A discussion, perhaps, for another time.
Hey, General, are you all right? You look like you've been standing too close to one of my shield generators. Whoa, claws out today, aren't they? General, needs... Sorry, guess I can't get my head out of the past. I moved around for a couple years. Working as a starship mechanic got me from place to place. I wasn't ready to settle down after the war. Then you understand my restlessness. Though the war had ended, I couldn't find peace in anything. As long as I kept moving, I didn't have to think about what happened. Know what I mean? I'm sure you do. I decided I'd do something constructive. I wanted to make up for the things I'd done in the war. I wanted to design planetary shields, but there weren't many systems with the credits to spare. There was more that needed to be rebuilt than protected. I found out that Telos was going to be the flagship project for the Republic, and it sounded like something good. I saw Telos before the Sith raised it. It deserved a better fate. But Zerka ruined everything. I thought I could force Zerka out on my own, but I guess I can't fix everything myself. It's good to be working with you again, General. Something else I can help you with? That old thing? I built him when I was a kid. Been following me around for years now, despite what I've done to try and chase him off. Hey, just kidding. I'm happy to have you around. He helps me out with repairs. I outfitted him with a cutting laser and some other tools for delicate modifications. He's also good for singeing the pants of annoying techs. I've been thinking about doing some other work on him, but I barely have time. Too busy fixing up the ship. Something else I can help you with? If the Republic would just rein Zerka in, there'd be no problem. But as long as Zerka is allowed to undermine the Athorians' efforts, Telos will remain dead. I can't take seeing my work being used by those bloodsuckers. But there's nothing I can do about it, so let's talk about something else. Something else I can help you with? I got tired of it. Kept dropping my hydro spanner. Figured I'd get a new one. I was only kidding. Actually, it was a souvenir from Malakor. I was lucky it was all I lost. But at least it gave me something to do, right? Everyone always said I was probably half machine anyway. Something else I can help you with? Just working on the ship. I'm not sure who got her up and running, but I'm amazed she's even space worthy. Whoever made these repairs doesn't think like most mechanics. But don't worry, I'll get everything in shape.